2008 Lexus ES350 with a 3.5 and do a water pump. What you want to do is disconnect your negative battery, remove your engine cover, then you want to get 12 millimeter socket, remove these two nuts off this bracket. Then you want to get a 17 millimeter socket shallow with a one inch extension on it with a ratchet and take this bolt out from below on this metal bracket. It like goes right there, right down here. You have to get down here, right here. And this is where this one's at. Remove that bolt. Then get your 14 and remove one, two, three, four, five. Five bolts. Okay, you take all those out. Uh, I can leave that one on there. And this one, and these, and this. Remember the two nuts? Got your bracket. <clears throat> bracket now since you took this bolt this bolt out from underneath there now this whole thing can lift up and pull out and you want to inspect your little mount make sure it's not totally broken it's broken a little bit if it's really bad it'll be really loose inside there so put that aside Next we gotta do is remove this bracket, number 12 right here, remove this bracket, and then we're gonna remove this bracket off the engine for the mount. Okay. Okay, you remove that 12 millimeter bolt, you got that bracket out of there, that bracket. Next, what you need to do is remove the right front tire. Of course, jack it up and support it properly. And then you want to remove the inner fender skirt right here, the 10 and the 10. And mine, one of mine broke. Then you want to get your uh, a 19 millimeter wrench and you want to take this nut off of this motor mount. See there's, that sticks through here and comes up on top. So you want to take that nut off and then you want to jack it up on the bottom on the oil pan to the block of wood with your jack and jack it up or lower it down onto a block of wood and <clears throat> get that engine off that motor mount bracket about like that. And that gives you a little bit more room to get around to this bracket. And uh, once I get it off, I'll show you where all the bolts are located. Okay, here's the bracket. You got a 10 here, which is on the top. You got a 14 there, take that one out. You got a 14 there, take that one out. And you got a 14 and a 14 and a 14 and a 14. Okay. Those stay in and they come out with the bracket. So leave them in the bracket. All right. And these, one there and one there, and your 10. Okay. So here we are. Next, we're going to work on is the upper hose adapter. It goes here. Okay, you got a stud right here. So there's a 10 millimeter nut, 10 millimeter bolt, 10 millimeter bolt. Your upper ho radiator hose, remove that. Got those three undone there. And you got a hose clamp on that hose and you got a metal line tube that goes down here inside here with an o-ring on it so what you need to do is spray down there with some uh penetrant to get on there as best as possible to spray around inside here so it soaks in so it hits that rubber seal and helps it come off of there and then also when you undo this line this hose spray it get a small skinny screwdriver open it up a little bit and spray it inside there underneath the hose and the, and the, and the metal pipe. 
and then work it away, work it around, and then you come over here and you pull this off and you get the whole thing out. Okay. So then there's the thermostat inside here. So there we go. Now we're gonna move on. Okay, next you want to do is draw yourself a little map of how the belt routing. So you don't have to remember which way it goes. Draw little pictures of it and all the pulleys and all that. And, and then get your <clears throat> belt tool, which is a 14 millimeter. And you want to go down there under the tensioner. Okay, that's the tensioner. One above it's an idler. There's an idler over there. And right there's the water pump. So we'll take the belt off. Next, you want to remove the two idler pulleys. There was one right here above the tensioner pulley. And there was one down here next to the crank pulley. And those are held on by 14 millimeter head bolts. <clears throat> you can get this one out with a ratchet, uh, air ratchet. But the bottom one, you, if you use an air ratchet, do it from below because you'll get it stuck inside the frame with an air ratchet. Otherwise, break it loose with a regular ratchet and use your fingers and pull it out. <clears throat> and be careful not to lose the little washer that goes behind them. Okay. And you can leave the tensioner on there, I'm pretty sure. And you just remove the bolt that's by it. Okay, so now what I need to do is remove the water pump pulley uh, bolts. Okay, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Water pump bolts are 12 millimeter. And what you need to do is get a 12 millimeter wrench, a nice long one, and a flat blade screwdriver, and stick it in between your other bolts <clears throat> heads, and use it for to lock the pulley so it doesn't turn and loosen them all up and then you can remove them with your fingers here's my wrench and i'll stick my screwdriver in there in between the pulleys bolts and wedge it against it okay and break them all loose and then use your fingers to take them out okay once you got all the water pump pulley bolts out and the pulley doesn't fall off you just gotta smack it with a small hammer and uh, come undone and you'll take that pulley and you'll come over here and Wiggle it off and set it up inside there. Put your bolts in the middle of it. Now you need to do is remove your water pump. And it's got 12 millimeters and tens on it. So we'll have to go around and remove them. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I just remembered. The tensioner pulley is reverse thread. So if you want to remove it, you go tighten direction. See the threads are reverse. So the reverse thread, so you remove the pulley. And don't get them cross mixed up when you're going back together. <clears throat> okay, so now you can remove all your bolts for your water pump, all your 10s and all your 12s. And don't forget there's a 12 down below, in the, below here. Kind of hard to see, so look at your new pump and count your bolts and look where they're all at. Okay, you got all the bolts out, the water pump should just fall right off. If you think you got all the bolts out, tap on it with a hammer a little bit and it should break loose. If it doesn't break loose, then you better double check to make sure that all the bolts are out. Okay, so I got all my bolts out. Pump comes right out. Okay, now what you need to do is Remove the gasket. Gasket should be in here somewhere. I don't think it's on here. I don't look like it. It should be a plate gasket. No. Yeah, it's in there. Right there. Remove it. Remove that gasket. It's a piece of metal, so. Careful you don't cut your hand on it, because it's pretty sharp. Get it off the dowels. Should be two dowels on it. Front cover. It's a pretty layered gasket. 
There we go. Has a couple gaskets on it. Okay. Do not put any silicone on them. Okay, I put silicone on them in the past and they leak. Yeah, so do not put silicone on them. Clean up that surface. Make sure it's clean. And then clean it up with some uh, some brake clean after you're done. What you might want to do is blow some air into the ports to help blow out the excess coolant so it doesn't just sit there and drip on your clean uh, cover. Clean cover. Okay, so clean it up. And also you need to get new O-rings for that. I'll show you part number in a minute. Okay. Okay, you got the front cover all cleaned up and for the water pump. Clean up your little pipe, remove the O-ring, clean up the surface, make sure there's no gook or silicone stuck in there. I'm replacing my hose clamp. Next, we're gonna prep our thermostat assembly. I'm gonna remove the two nuts from this. I'm gonna clean this up. Clean that surface up, clean this surface up. Replace the thermostat and the old, the old gasket. Clean this surface up. And then also clean up inside here where the O-ring goes. Try not to put any gouges in there. Just get it all cleaned up. And then uh, put your new thermostat in there and snug it up and then tighten it up. It's just a little bolt. Okay, clean up your housing. Make sure you clean up inside here where the inside not on top is not the ceiling surface inside here is the ceiling surface it's a square o-ring on the thermostat put the o-ring on the new thermostat get it in there because inside here is a groove and the thermostat fits inside the groove what i'll do is i'll put a little bit of silicone on the inside of my corners inside there just to help it out it's a little bit all the way inside there just a little bit inside that corner Okay, get it all cleaned up. So now we're gonna put it back together. Thermostat goes in one way, spring goes that way. So we're gonna assemble it. Okay, then I'll, this is the way it sits on the engine. And then I'll put my bleeder on my thermostat at the 12 o'clock position. And that'll help the air bleed out through there a little bit. Okay, you know, the, the bronze looking piece, gold looking piece will go on a 12 o'clock position inside here. Okay, so it would look like that. Okay, so now <clears throat> I'm going to put the other outlet on there, snug up your nuts, and then you most likely you want to tighten them to like 80 inch pounds. Okay. Okay. It's all together. A little bit of the sealer came out of there, and that's fine. A little bit goes a long ways, and here's my thermostat, the way it's supposed to look. All right. So now I cleaned up all the crud on that outlet, and also get all the crud off of there, the corrosion. And here's your bleeder, so you want to make sure that that's free also, so you can bleed the air out when you get it back together. Okay, we're ready to put the pump in. We'll put the pump in there with the gasket. We'll get all the bolts started, get them all started, and then you can snug them up and then we'll torque them, okay? Like I said, if it's a full metal gasket, no sealer, okay? This happens to have a metal spacer with a gasket on both sides. The gasket is actually glued to it, so questionable to put sealer on it I'm gonna put a real light film on it and then um, I really don't want to put any sealer on it but you're gonna do what you're gonna do but if it's a full tin metal no sealer this you could probably use a real little bit I would okay Okay, you got your water pump in there, got all your bolts started, and then you snug them up. Snug them up. 
Just a note before you put the bolts in, make sure the bolt threads are nice and clean and then uh, you're all set. So get them all started. And what I did was I put these two long ones in here from the housing just to make sure that those bolt holes are lined up, okay? So now I got them all snugged up and you want to torque them. The 10 millimeter head ones are 81 inch pounds. The 12 millimeter head ones are 15 foot pounds. Do not over torque them. All right, now you got the three bolts here for the uh, thermostat housing, okay? Don't forget about this one, you gotta put that one in, okay? Because once this housing's on, you won't be able to get it on. So make sure you put it in the right hole. Right hole, okay? That's the right hole, okay? So now I'm going to go around and tighten up my bolts and then uh, after that I'll put my pulley on. Okay, you got your idler pulleys on. Make sure you don't lose that little washer. Torque your idler pulleys to 30 foot-pounds. Go ahead and put your tensioner pulley on and you need to torque that one to 30 foot-pounds as well and you need to ratchet it over Put a pry bar in there and hold it and then regroup your uh, your torque wrench and then torque it down. Then also on your water pump bolts, you need to use the wrench and a long screwdriver to hold it. Wedge it in between the bolts and uh, tighten those bolts up on the water pump pulley. Now that we got that all done, we can uh, put the belt on now. Get your little schematic out and put the belt back in there. Okay, you got the van, the the belt on. All right. Now it's time for the thermostat housing. Don't forget your little O-ring. And uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of sealer on it to hold it in there, just a little bit. And then I'll put it on. And don't forget about this O-ring. That comes in this kit right here. It's a Felpro, so I'm pretty sure it's the green one. We'll see when I get them out, be able to hold on to them, okay? It was the bigger of the two O-rings, is the green one. And I got my seal in here. So now I'll put my thermostat housing down in there and uh, I'll uh, put my bolts in. And one thing that missing here where's my pump uh, let's see is that stud I gotta get this stud out of this one and put it in there okay I got the thermostat housing on there what you do is you, you push it onto that uh, pipe with the o-ring on it push it on and off a little bit and make sure it goes on nice and smooth make sure you don't push the o-ring off and then uh, get it up put against there, put your bolts in there and your nut and tighten them up, snug them up equally, and then go ahead and torque them down. So just little bolts, so don't break them. Probably like 80 inch pounds. So, so we got that done. Get your hose clamps tight. All right, and it's all looking good. Now what we need to do is weasel that uh, engine mount bracket inside there. Remember the ones we told you to keep the bolts in? Now we need to do is weasel this one down in there and get it in there, okay? Okay, you went in there pretty easy. Make sure you get the bolts into the holes when you're going in there. Don't get them off the side of them. Okay, got them all in, and then don't forget about your other two little bolts, the short ones, put those in there. Snug them all up and then tighten them up, tighten them like 35 foot-pounds, and then go ahead and put your little 10 millimeter bolt back on there just to hold the harness, okay? And then we got this bracket we gotta put on there too. Remember, it comes from here to over there. Okay, now we got the engine mount, little dog bone basically. Told you to take this one out. Apparently, I guess not. So you didn't have to take that one out. So make sure you put that one back in there and tighten it up. Remember that's the 17. 
all right and then when you get that tight line it up on there and slide it back in there and then get your bolts put in there and snug them up make sure you get them all started first okay it's going together so good now we can lower our engine back down so we can at least get this done so you might as well as go back down here lower the engine down and then get our motor mount nut back on the stud and then uh wrap that up and then come back up here and finish that okay engine mount make sure the stud goes through the, the bracket okay then you can put your nut on there and tighten it up that's a 19 millimeter remember and then now you can put your inner splash shield back on and then your tire and torque your tires to 100 foot pounds and if yours broke you can drill them out or put a tech screw in it or something okay all right tires on the ground got your mount get all your bolts snugged up and tighten them up then you want to open your bleeder is right here 10 millimeter pour and cool it cool comes out tighten your bleeder up and you want to go over to your battery connect it back up start the vehicle let it run while it's running top off your fluid when it gets warmed up put the cap back on take it for right around the block bring it back let it cool down remove your cap and then top off your fluids and come over here just for the heck of it open your bleeder see if any air comes out no air comes out you're good your fluids at the top put your cap back on come over here to your reservoir top off your reservoir and that's it you're all set and that's how you do your water pump if i helped you out with this video the water pump hopefully you can subscribe to me if you already did just want to thank you and uh good luck